Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and a few years ago NASA launched the wonderful InSight mission to Mars. This was a launch of a probe that's supposed to investigate a lot of various mysteries on Mars and hopefully discover what went wrong for Mars and why it changed so much compared to our own planet Earth. And despite some of the initial challenges, it was already able to send us a lot of scientific data that was analyzed and now we know a lot more about Mars and actually have a lot more questions than we did before. So let's talk about these new discoveries and welcome to What The Math. Very recently NASA released the so-called surprising year of science on Mars. This was essentially a combination of all of the data collected by the InSight mission, some of which was actually a lot more surprising than we thought. Now let's begin with some of the discoveries in regards to the so-called Mars quakes, basically earthquakes on Mars. We obviously expected Mars to be seismically active, in other words, possess a lot of earthquakes, but we didn't expect that many. Pretty much as soon as InSight probe landed on Mars, it started experiencing earthquakes and detecting them from all over the planet. And although none of them were really big earthquakes, most of them were about 3 to maybe 4, so basically this is kind of similar to what we have here on Earth on a daily basis as well, nevertheless they were able to detect about 450 earthquakes in total since the beginning of the mission, that's basically at least one or even more than one per day. Here's how the Martian earthquake compares to one on Earth, and although generally speaking earthquakes were present pretty much everywhere on the surface, some of the biggest ones were actually, let me try to find this, there we go, right here. This is the biggest volcano or former volcano in the solar system, the so-called Olympus Mons. Now here, this is a huge structure. Its height is basically 22 kilometers, and that's three times the size of the tallest mountain here on Earth. And because of the sheer mass of this object, it generates a lot of pressure on the actual planet. And all of this pressure then generates earthquakes, and some of the biggest ones were actually inside these fractures right here that you see on this beautiful picture. These are actually called Cerberus Fossa, and all of the biggest events happen in this region, very close to the biggest uh, volcano. And because of these observations, scientists deduced that inside of Mars, basically the internal parts of Mars, are much more fractured than Earth and even the Moon. And the fracturing probably happened because, well, first of all, Mars no longer has any activity on the inside, or at least not enough, and also because of the actual shrinking of the planet. Basically, as the planet cools down, it seems to shrink in size, which also increases the frequency of various earthquakes. At least this is how the scientists currently explained the unusual frequency of these earthquakes on this planet. But the internal structure of Mars and of course earthquakes are not the only findings. The scientists also realized that there are a lot of other strange things happening on the surface of Mars that we didn't really expect. During its mission, the inside probe detected these unusual pressure changes, suggesting that this passed overhead. This is what we refer to as the so-called dust devil. We've seen quite a lot of pictures of them from the orbit of Mars, and we've also seen a lot of various effects that are left by the dust devils as they move across Martian surface, but we've never really caught one in action except for maybe once with Curiosity Probe. Specifically here in 2017 we may have kind of witnessed it and were able to take a picture of it, but so far they've been invisible to us. Here once again you can kind of see something moving across the screen, it's very very difficult to see, simply because these dust devils are for the most part really really thin in terms of the actual pressure changes. Martian atmosphere is not very thick, so it would be very difficult for these objects to actually produce similar effects to for example a tornado here on Earth. But they still have some effect and this was detected by the probe. And it didn't just find one or two or even ten, it was able to detect thousands of them, meaning that there's actually a few of them every single day passing close enough to the probe where it actually can detect them. And so if we do end up going to Mars one day and possibly even starting a colony there, we do need to be aware of these potential problems. Another really unusual discovery was in regards to the magnetosphere of the planet. We've actually previously measured the magnetosphere of the planet from the orbit using probes like for example MAVEN, and we had a pretty good understanding of what the total magnetosphere of Mars was. But when the InSight probe did it again using its own magnetometer, it discovered something completely different. The actual magnetosphere on the surface was about 10 times stronger, or at least the magnetic power was 10 times stronger than we thought it would be. 
And this is something we can't really explain just yet. Currently we think that maybe these magnetic effects are coming from underneath the probe, from the actual magnetized rocks where the probe is located. But as of today there is really no good answer how the magnetic forces on the surface are about 10 times stronger than what we believe them to be. In other words, there seems to be a magnetic field on the inside and it's created by something and it's being maintained by something, but there is really no good explanation on how deep it is and what's really making it. Because as I mentioned before, we don't really detect this from the orbit, so it's something coming from within. And what's even more unusual is that these observations seem to actually vary between day and night. And for some unknown reason, they also seem to pulse right around midnight. So there's really no good explanation to what's happening yet, but it's definitely something scientists really want to investigate in a little bit more detail to understand what's going on here and what's causing these unusual effects. One potential explanation is that this is some sort of an effect from the solar winds striking the surface of Mars, which is why it's dependent on day and night cycle. But this is just an assumption and there's no definitive explanation just yet. And to try to explain this, we actually have to investigate the Martian core in a little bit more detail and take a look at what's happening on the inside to see if it's actually something that creates magnetosphere down there. And the last discovery coming from this mission, at least as of today, are the sounds of the Martian surface. Now, unfortunately, if you were to just stand on Mars and try to listen, you would not really hear much. Some animals would because it's so-called infrasound, it's basically really really low frequencies, roughly around 10 Hz or so in frequency, but because we can digitally process the sound to be heard, this is roughly what all of this sounds like if you were to stand on the beautiful surface of Mars and if you were able to perceive these sounds. And here is what all of this sounds like, this is from the video you can find in the description below, released by NASA itself, and the sounds you're about to hear are essentially the Martian wind. Which is actually somewhat similar to what I thought it was going to sound when I made a video what your voice might sound like on Mars. You can check it out somewhere above my head. Anyway, so that's all we know about Mars and the mission called Inside. but once we discover more and once NASA releases more information, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of other exciting discoveries coming from this planet and hopefully it will help us understand what actually happened to it and how to avoid that happening from here on Earth. Anyway, until we learn more, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel Patreon, it does help me quite a lot, and maybe consider purchasing one of the wonderful person t-shirts that I'm wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.